Your digital meat thermometer is the most important tool in your barbecue tool belt. The last thing you need is one that loses connectivity, runs out of battery, or shows inaccurate readings mid-cook. So today we're putting four popular meat thermometers, including a meter, a fireboard, and an inkbird, through seven tests. I'll talk through the good, the bad, and what to consider when buying one. Before we get started, I just want to reassure you that unlike a lot of videos on meat thermometers, this one's unbiased. We're not sponsored by any of these brands. I've bought all of these out of my own pocket and I have actually been using these thermometers for the last few years. So coming up, we've got seven tests and I'll give each meat thermometer a score out of 10 for each test so that at the end of this video, we can tally up the scores to see which meat thermometer is best. And I'll share a couple of thoughts on which meat thermometers I would buy again, one of which unfortunately I don't have for this test. But first up, we're going to look at the most important factor of all, accuracy. Okay, so to test the accuracy of the thermometers, we're first gonna create an ice bath. I'm gonna start by pouring in this ice into a cup. Next, I'm gonna pour in some cold water just below where the ice is. So we don't want there to be kind of a separation of water and ice. Just give that a little stir. This should obviously be zero degrees Celsius or uh, 32 Fahrenheit. If we make the ice bath properly, following the steps I've just shown, then it should always be at zero degrees. And I'm using a thermal imaging camera just as a kind of uh, a bit of a check. This was calibrated only two months ago and I can see on here we're getting readings of zero degrees minus 0 0.1. We're very much in the right ballpark. We'll try the ink bird, now the fireboard, and then the meter. Okay, so our instant reef is reading 0.3 degrees Celsius, so 0.3 degrees out. On the fireboard, I'm getting 0 0.6, 0 degrees on the meter, and then on the ink bird, I'm getting one degree. So the most accurate of these was the meter. So they're all accurate within one degree. Worth pointing out as well, it's quite normal for thermometers like this to lose calibration a bit over time, but I'm gonna knock off one point for every 0.2 degrees out they were. So the meter gets 10 points, the instant read thermometer gets eight points, the fireboard gets seven points, and the ink bird gets five points. So next we're going to test the temperature limits of all four thermometers. We're going to start with them about two feet above the vortex, then down to one foot, and then directly over the vortex to see which is the last one standing. Now you might be wondering why does this even matter? In 99% of cases, if you're cooking under normal conditions, you're never going to reach the kind of temperatures we're about to be testing at. But there are two instances where you may want your thermometer to be able to take on higher temperatures. The first is if you want to use it to measure the temperature of the pit. Sometimes pits can get pretty hot, and you don't, in that case, want a thermometer that's going to max out at, say, 200 degrees Celsius. The second instance is accidents. Sometimes probes fall out with the meat, they fall onto the charcoal. And ideally you don't want that to mean that you have to replace the whole thermometer, the sensors break or the cables melt. So this is something that you may want to take into account. Light some charcoal. Okay, so first we're gonna go in with a fireboard and see that climbing. So far so good. So here we've got the ink bed. It's gonna go in just next to it. It's coming up to temperature nicely. Seems good. You'd never really use a instant read thermometer for this kind of thing, but just for the sake of the experiment, that doesn't seem to be having any issues with it at that height. Lastly, we're gonna try with meter. Now, worth pointing out, meter do explicitly say not to do this. So don't do this at home. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull up the app and see what it says. All right, see how they do a bit closer to the vortex. So going in with the fireboard and the ink bird. And for my curiosity, let's try it with the instant read as well. Let's see what happens. Ooh, that's climbing fast. 250 Celsius, 275, 280, 290, 300. Okay, 300, we've hit the limit. These two on the other hand, still going strong. 216 on the ink bird, 267 on the fireboard. Okay, so our ink bird has just decided to turn off. Uh, it's full battery, so I'm not sure. Definitely seems to be struggling a little bit. All right, we're back on. They're both doing all right at around 260. All right, let's test them closer to the vortex. So they're now all directly above the vortex. So the inkbird's temperature limit is 300 degrees Celsius. So we're getting 430 on the fireboard, which means the fireboard is the winner. So I'm gonna give the meter three points. This is one of my biggest pet peeves with the meter. I do think the temperature limits on it are too low, especially the ambient sensor. The instant read thermometer, I'll give this six points. As for the type of thermometer it is, you never really need this to go particularly hot. The Ingbird, not bad at 300 degrees. I'll give this eight points. And then the Fireboard, 10 points. So next we're gonna test the battery life. I've charged all four thermometers up to 100%. We're gonna put the probes in a potato, which we're gonna trick them into thinking is a brisket. So the app expects it to be a long cook and we'll see which one lasts the longest. Fireboard is in. Next we'll do the Ingbird. Now the meter. 
Okay, so quick update on our battery life test. The meter lasted 23 hours, 11 minutes. But in practice, you never really run out of battery with the meter. Providing you put it back in the block, it's always charging. The block lasts for about two years. So for the meter, I'm gonna give it 10 points. The instant read thermometer and the ink bird, it turns out they have a feature that automatically turns them off after a certain amount of time. So we're never gonna know how much battery they have, but they do last for a long time. You just can't use them for continuous cooks. So I'm gonna give them both six points. And finally, the Fireboard had the longest battery life at 35 hours, 24 minutes. So I'm gonna give this 10 points. So next we're gonna look at connectivity range. And this is probably my biggest frustration using smart meat thermometers because the whole point of a smart thermometer is you can go about your day and just check your phone if you wanna see where the cook is at. You don't have to constantly be there checking it. And if the smart thermometer is constantly losing connection and you have to walk right back to get signal again, it kind of defeats the purpose. So I've put an Apple AirTag on the potato. I'm gonna go for a walk and see at what distance each of these loses connection. 10 feet, 20 feet, 50 feet. Okay, so the ink bird has just gone down to one way connection only. 60 feet, both the fireboard and the meter have gone now. And if we go up to 70 feet, so at 70 feet, the ink bird loses all connection. So this was an interesting test. If I was just showing my opinion, I would have told you that the ink bird has pretty awful connectivity. In fact, the reason I moved away from this to the meter was for that reason. The meter has slightly better connectivity, but still I run into a lot of issues with the meter. And the fireboard is brilliant. I've never had a connection issue with the fireboard. So it's interesting to see that they all lost connection between 50 and 70 feet. The difference is in how the technology is built to handle a loss in connectivity. With the Inkbird, nothing is stored locally or uploaded to the cloud. So if you go out of range, you lose everything, you lose all the charts and you have to start over. Really frustrating. The meter is a little bit better. It does upload the data to the cloud. But if your phone goes out of range of the block, then it loses connectivity and it just tells you to get back in range. But you don't lose the historical data. You can still see the charts. So it's not the end of the world, but still a bit annoying. Whereas the Fireboard is constantly uploading the data via Bluetooth and via Wi-Fi to the cloud. So if you do go out of range, you don't really notice it. It gives the illusion that you're always connected because it's either pulling the data from the cloud or it's pulling it locally. So for this one, I'm going to give the Fireboard 10 points, the Meter 7 points, and the Inkbird 4 points. So next, we're going to look at the apps, starting with the Meter. So the Meter's got over 80,000 reviews in the App Store with an average rating of 4.7. So we know the app's pretty good. I'm just going to walk through setting up a cook in the app, talking through some of the features I like, some of the features I dislike. I'll touch on alerts and the cooking presets in the next test. But for now, I'm just going to go in, set up a new cook. I really like how simple the user interface is, how easy it is to use. And there's a really nice feature in the Meter app where when you start cooking and it gets kind of it's been going for long enough, you can see the estimated cooking time, which I find really helpful. This is really nice here where you've got the three different temperatures. You've got your kind of internal, your target and your ambient temperature, and you can see how close they are together. The analytics I do find a little bit limited. It was something I was really excited about with the meter is to be able to have graphs of your cooking temperatures over time, because that's something I didn't get with the Inkbird that I really missed. So next we've got the Inkbird app. I'm not gonna be around the bush. This app is pretty awful as reflected by the average rating of 2.7 in the App Store. It does the basics. You can see the temperature remotely if the Inkbird is actually connected, which most of the time it's not. But the graphing capability, frankly, is completely useless because if the Inkbird loses connection, you lose all of the graphing. Uh, and there's not really, it doesn't have anywhere near the level of features as the meter does. So I'm not a big fan of this app. Lastly, we've got the Fireboard. This has got 130 reviews in the App Store with an average rating of four stars. Personally, I'm a huge fan of this app. I find it really easy to use. I love the graphing, the data and the analytics in it, the ability to compare multiple cooks on the same graph, to go through your historical cooks and see all the data, add notes. It almost feels more like a barbecue logbook. One feature that I do love about Fireboard that I wish Meter did a better job at is the ability to access your cooks on a computer or online. With the Fireboard app, you can just go onto a computer, access your Fireboard account, and you can see all the cooks. It's really nice to see them on a big screen and you get a few different features in the web app. Meter, you can technically do this, but you have to share a link to a computer and you have to keep track of that link. Once a cook is over with Meter, it's quite, quite tricky to then access the historical cook. So based on the App Store ratings, I'm gonna give the Meter app nine points, the Fireboard eight points, the Inkbird five points, and the Instant Read Thermometer doesn't have an app, so zero points. So when it comes to alerts and cooking presets, this is where the Meter really comes into its own. You've got sections for inspiration and recipes in the app that are really tasty. And when you do go to set up a cook, you've got a ton of options to choose from and different levels of doneness. If you happen to want to cook reindeer to medium rare, it will tell you how to do that. 
Another feature I really like in the Meter app when it comes to alerts is that it doesn't just alert you when the cook is done, but you can see the estimated cooking time and it will send you an alert either to SMS or as a notification on your phone or even email five minutes before the cook is done. So the Inkbird app doesn't have any recipes, cooking presets, anything like we just saw in the Meter app, but it does have alerts. There's a few issues though. Firstly, they're very vague. It just says B for chicken, suggesting we'd cook a sirloin steak to the same temperature we'd cook a brisket. And secondly, some of the temperatures are a little bit questionable. For example, it suggests cook chicken to 68 degrees, which if you know what you're doing, you know to kind of hold it for a certain amount of time at that, that's fine. But it's a bit concerning they wouldn't just say 74 degrees, which would be a lot safer. So not the most helpful, but you can set a temperature and get an alert when that temperature is reached. And the fireboard's also pretty limited in this area. We don't have any suggested temperatures or cooking presets, recipes like the meter. Again, I think this is because the fireboard's aimed at a more intermediate to advanced user, whereas meter's trying to be accessible to all cooks, particularly beginners. However, the fireboard does have alerts and because it's a multi-probe thermometer, you can set different alerts for different probes, which is quite nice, but you do need to know your temperatures or at least be able to do a quick Google search when using the fireboard. So I'm gonna give the meter 10 points, the fireboard seven points and the Ingbird four points. So lastly, I want to briefly touch on versatility, because the reason I have so many meat thermometers is because none of these are quite right for every situation. And this could make a big difference on the type of meat thermometer that is right for you. For example, if you do a lot of rotisserie, you probably want to rule out anything with a cable, as the cable is going to get tangled up in the rotisserie. In those situations, something like the meter is probably the best bet. However, if you do, for example, a lot of small cuts of fish, you probably don't want to use the meter because it's going to leave a big hole in the fish. It can flake it, it can fall out quite easily. In those instances, something like the instant read is probably the best bet. Similarly, if you do a lot of big cooks where you're cooking lots of things at the same time, you probably want to have multiple probes. So that's where something like the Fireboard or the Inkbird can be a good shout. Or Meter do, it's not the latest model, but Meter do do a block where you get four probes in it. For this one, I'm going to give them all 10 points because they're all equally versatile and they all come in use in different situations. Let's have a look and see how they scored in total. So out of a possible 70 points, the instant read thermometer came in last with 27 points. In third place, we have the Inkbird with 45 points. In second place, we've got the Meter with 59 points. And just inching ahead in first place, we've got the Fireboard with 62 points. So not a lot in it between the Fireboard and the Meter. Both of these are really good thermometers. If you are deciding between these two, if you're really into the data, the graphing, the analytics, and a bit more advanced, the Fireboard is a really good option. Whereas if you just want a meat thermometer that's gonna help you cook anything and everything to perfection, the meter is a really good choice. I would buy both of these again in a heartbeat. I wouldn't buy the Inkbird again. And the Instant Reef thermometer is an interesting one. I use this a lot. If I was buying again, I would probably choose a Thermapen 1 or Thermapen Professional. They have an infrared sensor, which allows you to check the surface temperature as well as the internal, uh, which is something you can't do with this but all good options. Now, if you wanna see some of these thermometers used in action, check out this video and I'll see you in the next experiment.